If you paid even the smallest amount of attention to Fortnite competitive from 2020 to 2022. He's going to walk you through the side. He oh. finds two. That's one. Oh. And that's the second. And all of a sudden, Miro is proving why he is this good. This and is still all on the line here. He's going to find another knock onto Rise. Miro, it's Dresden Jam. Here Miro has a job down. Can he make it work? Oh my God. Everything is a solo. He put everything on his oh back. My He's gosh. jumping the side. He's hitting perfect shots. Nine builds. Has time to get the minis off. Let's see it, Miro. We hyped you up as a solo player. You've done it as a trio champion. But right now, everyone is watching. Your teammates are watching. First place is watching. Can you overtake them? Just misses oh. the shot. Oh no! Who has the confidence to do that? You probably saw the controller legend, Miro, stacking championships. Not two, not three, not four, not five. Two with day in reverse. Oh, here's your oh. FNCS NA East winners. It's TNA's day. It's TNA's Miro. And of course, TNA reverse 2K. So day, Miro, reverse. They are your NAE FNCS final season six champions, baby. And then a three-peat with Booga. It is Miro, another winner yet again, three-time champion. And now you're like, hey, yo, Miro, how about another back-to-back -back dub? Hey, yo, Dukes, you trying to come along for the ride, baby? You trying to win this whole thing? A little bit of fireworks there. Celebrations in the air now for Booga and Miro. As many as Taysen has on EU, only Epic Whale has more. Six on North America West. But at the end of 2022, it seems like an exceptional career was coming to an end. A disappointing 36th in the FNCS Invitational. Then after Major 1 in 2023, he announced he was retiring. Yesterday, Mero announced that he will be stepping away from Fortnite competitive. But Fortnite would have more in store for Miro. And even more for his upstart duo, Cooper. Cooper was an up and coming mechanical demon who had around 5k earned at the start of chapter four season two based in Texas. So with the shift to NA Central, that season he saw a huge ping buff, a true inspiration for anyone who ever said I would be the best on zero ping. Last week, Fortnite ended the North America Central server located in Dallas, Texas. When Miro decided he would play again, he was picking between Cooper and another player. Naturally, he flipped a coin. When it was Tails, Miro simply replied, where are we landing? Gangster. And they were amazing in FNCS Major 2. Miro, who announced his retirement at the start of the season, but then randomly started dominating with his new duo Cooper. Cooper proved himself on the biggest stage, making multiple highlight plays, including almost solo clutching to win the entire tournament in the final game, placing second and qualifying for the global championship. But despite this great result after coming out of retirement, Miro was becoming the forgotten great. Players like Kami, Taysen, Booga, Epic Whale, and Queezy all seem to have passed him in the GOAT conversation. Their combination of land successes, insanely dominant FNCS wins, and the strength of the EU region were the most common reasons. He'd have to settle for the greatest controller player ever. But to me, there can be only one answer to who is the best controller player of all time. Miro. Unless. The Global Championship would be the biggest tournament since the World Cup. All three FNCS majors plus the last chance qualifiers would bring 75 duos to Copenhagen for a three round tournament. The first round consisting of 50 duos who qualified in major one through three with the top 25 qualifying straight to finals. Round two consisted of the bottom 25 duos from round one and the 25 duos who qualified through the last chance qualifiers with the top 25 players from that qualifier filling the remaining spots in the finals and a six game final for the world championship. Going into this epic weekend, this was still on people's minds. Cammy might peek. Break through the it's wall. Shot's gonna be fired. Oh. And they do it. Become legends are on top. The rivalry between Cammy and Seti, Queezy and Venno. I think we're here to finish the story that we started last year. We're fighting to show that we can go back to back. Many thought the global championship would be a rehash of the Invitational. Cami Seti are my favorite. Then you got Queezy Vino. Queezy Vino are the pop off of you team. If it wasn't going to be the same top two, it would be dominated again by EU players. Most had EU on top, but NA was lurking. Regardless of regional rivalry, the hype was insane. And we had three days of Fortnite bliss ahead of us. And day one started with surprising news. 
Bucky had been disqualified from the tournament. Someone at Blast has told him he's disqualified and he has to leave the country, but he was never told why he was disqualified. Leaving his teammate Okus to play out the tournament as a solo. Drama aside, when games begin, the world was locked in. Game one seemed like it was sticking to the script with Queezy and Vino winning. In game two, we see how competition brings the best out of people, with Zagu and Pivoclip coming up with an incredible surge strategy. And they have a very, very interesting strategy. They're actually healing Striker and getting as much surge as possible. What a unique position to be in, but also <laughs> you have to be so smart to think like this. In game three, the signs that NA would be different this year began to emerge. Cold with an amazing 1v2 against Pink and Vico. Then he and Acorn win the game. Making sure no one's got a chance to breathe, but Larpex is still going. He's found two. That's 11 eliminations for Larpex on the low. But NA takes the game. Acorn and Cold, the shrug. In game four, King, the Argentine star from World Cup who struggled with off spawn, was still making highlight plays. Though he failed to qualify out of day one. And day one closed out with a threat solo clutch that would qualify him and Booga, who had struggled up to that point. But Threats does it yet again. Another elimination. Trying to go ahead and keep him and Booga's dream alive. And the day ended with NA's most consistent duo in 2023, Rise and Iamzo on top. Granted, it might not be necessary. Almost found the closing shot there on to Rise, but with Iamzo there to back him up. The day one leaderboard had Acorn and Cold on top, with startling omissions from the top 25. Acorn and Kanata, who struggled against Malibu and Thomas off spawn, Duke and Edgy, Bryce, Chubbs, King, Phaser, and Cooper and Miro, who were not super happy. I think we should be doing a lot better in terms of on the leaderboard. Yeah, I mean, I'm not going to say too much because I don't want to get DQ'd, but I feel like I really haven't had a fair chance of playing Fortnite yet. On to day two, where big teams like Scented, Polarized, Peter Bot Byla, Mr. Savage Vadil, Clicks, and Epic Whale were waiting for their first shot to qualify. On day two, Bryce and Chubbs, who struggled mightily on day one, took the first win with Miro and Cooper in second. Won't make it through. Cooper going absolutely nuclear with the back-to-backs here. Cooper just won't let it go. He's actually got it. It's actually no Bryce and Chubbs. I thought it as well. I thought Cooper just stole away the game, but it's Bryce and Chubbs. In game two, EU team Pixie and Cheatin, who are the last second replacement for a disqualified team. One, remember this team. I got to his advantage, but it only lasts for so long. Cheating and Pixie take the game. Game three saw Dukes complete an incredible 1v2 for the win. A profound bounce back from a weekday one for the major two winners. Two of NA's finest directly above him. What? Massive shot though onto second. Dukes with the back to back and it's a victory royale. Vico and Pink won game four, also bouncing back from a poor day and ensuring Acorn and Cold would be contested in finals. That's gone and Pingu at the bottom and fall damage is real onto Vico, but he gets the trade at the bare minimum and Pink and Vico take the game. Going into the fifth and final game, many big teams like King and Phaser, Polarized and Scented, and crucially Clicks and Epic Whale were on the outside of the top 25 or barely in it. And clicks went down early, meaning Epic Whale had to clutch. He's still five below. He's gonna have to heal here and find a tag. Can he get it? No. Shot from above. It's Hen who plays upset Pamps to here if he doesn't find a tag. After a valiant and intense few minutes, they missed by just four points or one single elimination and were gutted. Mr. Savage and Vadil pulled out the win. One situation, Vadil versus Rose, a player who already has a spot versus a player who needs a big win. Rose goes down, Vadil takes him out, but who qualified? That's the question we're asking. What a well played fight it was, and Vadil and Savage get a win like we know they should. Clinching first on the day two leaderboard. In addition to Savage and Vadil, day two saw a lot of big teams make it through, like Kanad and Agers, and you may have guessed it Cooper and Miro. So going into finals, the winners will share one million dollars. Here's who everyone thought would win. I think a lot of people probably expect Queezy and Veno to come out strong, right? You know, when they've been as good as they've been all year long. 
I think they're, they're, they're shooting to, to be a favorite today, no? Is it finally, uh, finally the point where we put in our official predictions? <laughs> oh, gosh. Mm. Listen, I, I have to go Acorn and Cold. I really cannot doubt them after that day one upper bracket performance. I think they got it. But after two strong days, NA was getting a lot of love. The finals would be just six games as opposed to 12 in the Invitational. So really anything could happen. The spawn beef between Kanata and home favorite Thomas HD was getting a lot of attention. Listen, like, I got nowhere else to land. And when game one commenced, it was on. And there goes the first one, the crowd. Everybody's been waiting for this one. The rematch, Thomas and Malabuka versus Kanata and Agers. Kanata said it. He has the best drop. He's always going to touch first, and they do just that. But Thomas HD does have a weapon as well. Kanata has a side angle here onto Thomas HD, and he draws the first tag. It's a trade. But he gets the full finish. one nothing for Kanata and Agers. Cami and Seti were also contested off spawn. But this clip about sums up how it went for them. Cami just 360 no scoped someone in a $4 million land. The surge farming strategy pioneered by Zagu and Pipo was an inspiration for this lobby. Good artists copy, great artists steal. Into Endgame, where Dukes takes out Cammy with a rocket ram. Cammy. Down comes Cammy, and then he's looking to target of Duke. It's the destruction here in the lobby by himself with the knock. Then aggressively eliminates Pixie. He's under the ramp, goes for it, he gets it there. Kicking off a wild Endgame, Seti makes a hype play as a solo, and Reek gets a beautiful elimination before going down. Miro takes out Seti, setting up an insane 1v1 to close out the game. Miro versus Sphinx. NA versus NA to take game number one. Incredible that NA will secure this here, but talk about the turn of events here. Miro taking down Seti, putting his name in the conversation. People forget what Miro is capable of, but now it's a 1v1. Old blood versus the new. Basically, Miro showing, hey, I'm the big dog of the region. Sphinx says, I want to prove that I can do it. We already know he's got the mouth in him, but can he put the bullets where they need to go? He needs to put some respect on his name. Miro running out of build. That's his last chance. He falls all the way down. Miro goes down. And Polo and Sphinx take game one, which would be their high water mark, and they would finish in 16th. In to game two, and back to everyone's favorite EU versus NA off spawn fight. Malabuka evens the score. He finds Aegis with a huge tag. Kanata's already down, and they're finished. Misha and Tini are up to the same tricks from Major 3. Just a little bit, but the bait has been oh! taken. Down goes one of them. Misha and Tini strike yet again. Cooper steals an elimination from Acorn. Shots come Ooh. in, he hits it, he goes right back up, zip line once more, polarize goes down, but it's not the team you thought. Cooper steals that one away. Then French duo Potosai and Snazy get an elimination. While they were not super relevant from a leaderboard perspective, placing 27th, the French fans in the arena were the loudest all weekend, as you could hear it on the broadcast. Put in all that work, all that damage, and four points slip away. Meanwhile, Poda. <laughs> Sai and Snazy, the M8 boys are back at it again. Oh no, but they couldn't save Striker this time. So lost damage, but the strategy was still there. Mr. Savage and Vadil take out Trulex and Chicho, starting endgame with Peterbot in the midst of a solo clutch, taking out Kami before placement points, kicking in in a big way. Looking for the fight, jump to tell Box. He's playing spoiler. Was that Kami there he takes out? Potentially in the exchange in the full finish. And his rampage continues, proving he can make plays on land. To work with Peter Bot is continuously oh on the hunt and finds a monster of a shot on the A court. Even though he's not going to get the spoils of all of what he's done, at least there's another heavy hitter out. Cooper and Miro are deep into another endgame and take out Malabuka. Down for him to try to survive, but Cooper and they are, are ready to end that run. They get into the box and they send Malabuka back down to the lobby. Then another team on low ground. The game closes down to another 1v1. He's already been able to get one. Miro out for redemption in that last game, but he has no materials. Zone is taking him out until the final shot is in. There it goes. Pixie and Cheaton take the game. But Cheaton holds on to win. This duo, a true Cinderella story, and they only qualified because the Russian team was disqualified. After two games, Cooper and Miro hold a healthy lead with back-to-back -back second places. 
Levin 2K put their game plan perfectly. Be two back to back second places. I mean, if they keep playing like this, we're gonna get to game four and it might be a done deal. Into game three and a spawn fight the world could not get enough of. Adrian doesn't look like he has a weapon. It's all up to Kanata and he strikes while the iron's hot. 2 1, Kanata and Agers. Vinajan takes out Mr. Savage. Then, Vadil with an all time bailout Vidil shot. Trying to make up for him going down no early way. on. In the no game, way. He burns! He burns! Fernayan says, You are out of the lobby! This engagement sums up the finals for Vadil and Mr. Savage, who were pretty disappointed coming in 38. Seti goes down with 69 players left. Nice. Leaving Cami to solo clutch. Miro and Cooper, who are very low on materials and heals, push aggressively for a refresh. He goes for it, puts it all on the line, doesn't quite find it, and Miro's here to back him up, and the wow. finish comes in. The refresh was massive. And get it. And then... Another one. Able to heal on up. Oh, oh there goes his teammate as well. Kiris goes down. Wow. And now they're both booted and booted. Miro goes down, but Cooper has to solo clutch. Cooper by himself now as Miro's fall is big. With this much on the line, and so is Cooper. No way. And he is still going. This could be the miracle run for Cooper. Eliminations, more mats than they know what to do with. Oh my God. Pixie and Cheaton keep their insane Cinderella story alive and well, picking up the win on height. A 2v1 situation. They got their seven eliminations, and it's Carmi who's already outside of the zone, and he doesn't even survive a chance to fight the 1v2. Cooper and Miro's massive lead begins to narrow. By the way, this tournament had a halftime show. Let's call it Fortnite Super Bowl. Our favorite spawn fight, 3v1, cannot agers win, but third parties immediately take them out. Touchdown first. The game defining moment right here. Malibu is already set on the backside, pitched between two sides. Agers gets the first one. Kanata gets the follow up. Thomas is hurt and the finish, but there's another team here. Put aside Snazy, get a sneaky elimination, and we just can't get enough of the French fans' reaction. Just having gotten an opportunity to rejoin and just ah. quickly sent back no. again to the elimination process. Miro and Cooper, they just keep cooking. Peter ba Baila stay aggressive, taking out the last ever NA West champions, Thoric and Bolts. But it leaves Peter as a solo. Here, Peter Bott and Baila, though, they're trying to put those mechs to work. Baila gonna force his way in, just now getting barely above the surge damage threshold, but Peter Bott... Who then unleashes the wildest rocket ram play we will ever see. Peter Bott has to dig into his heels now. Decide, hey, I gotta get out of here. Breaks through everyone's build. <laughs> Why not just cause chaos and send players flying? In the process! In endgame, Cheaton has the solo clutch, but goes down before meaningful placement points are awarded, giving Cooper and Miro the opportunity to expand their lead, which they happily take. Meanwhile, Cami and Seti vs Queezy and Vino, rivalry, finally shows up as they fight for high ground. Miro gets another elimination as they look to build their margin for safety. A little bit longer than he is ending, but Miro dropping down a low ground, finding that elimination onto Vanya. Completely out oh! of the team, but that's the not the no! Team. He needed to finish to stay alive there, and Cooper sacrificed himself. Seti takes out Queasy, then Reed. We may not think there's a rivalry here, but there is sure is bad blood. Seti on fire, still going, but Cami has something to say about it. Vino shuts that down. Bryce and Chubbs take out Cami, then take the win. Vino doing what he can from below. Cole still trying to hang on, but it's gonna be Bryce, it's gonna be Chubbs, as they take another victory royale. Eliminating Vino, then Cole, the high point of the tournament for Queezy and Veno, who finished 11th. And Bryce and Chubbs get another victory royale this weekend and are charmingly shocked they won. What does it feel like to take a second victory royale in Copenhagen? It feels amazing. I'm, it's, it's exciting. But Cooper and Miro expanded their lead over second, but Cami and Seti were starting to climb. And in game five, Kanata and Adrian keep running up the score on Thomas and Malibuka. Checking in on one more favorite, Mersash and Taysen would fail to live up to expectations, finishing in 15th. Taysen, who's definitely considered the greatest online player winning in solos, duos, and trios, but has struggled on land. At least he has an incredible mentality about it. Pixie goes down early and Sheet manages to reboot him, keeping their hopes alive but go down soon after to Threats and Buga, who also struggled against expectations, finishing in 23rd. You could just tell that Buga and Threats were not gonna let that one go easy. And Mira and Cooper now have the opportunity to run up the score, with only Cami and Seti remotely close. But if Cooper and Mira are locked in, this is hometown, they're looking to do just that. 
but everyone's hurt here but miro and cooper finished the job they have an opportunity to expand their lead adrius had a beautiful clutch in endgame that was ruined by fall damage he and kanata would finish 18th ahead of their contesters malibuka and thomas who came in 39th he loses kanata though in the process oh! finds parzo in the middle oh! of a massive shot but he falls through his demise ran out of build there and chicho manages to pull out the win it's his chance here, but no, he falls too, and Chico takes it all away. What? Can anyone wow. stop Cooper and Miro? Well, let's find out. It was 65 points for a victory royale and four points for an elimination. So second or third would need 10 plus elims for the win. Adrian and Kanata take out Malibuka, but not Thomas, officially making them the kings of the racetrack. Malibuka is rebooted, and they give Miro and Cooper their biggest scare of the tournament, pushing them in mid-game. It's not just anyone that's lurking beneath them, it's Malibuka, it's Thomas. But Miro and Cooper manage to escape. Cheaton and Pixie go down with zero points, and Cooper and Miro stack up more eliminations, but go down. Dropped another layer here, inside the box though, to be Tayson first to fall, Cooper and Miro just continue to grow the count. 324 points currently on the leaderboard. And Cooper, despite no way. having been knocked, Miro still going. No way, but he finds Kylie there too with a huge finish. And his teammate gets finished off now too. Shot from the side here, he has no more build. He needs this refresh. If not, it's over, and down he goes. Leaving the door just slightly open for Cami and Seti to steal the tournament and defend their title. Hard to ever count Cami and Seti out, but when they need still another nine this is a chance in the mid ground. And, but it's gonna be Flixie first. Oh! Flixie nearly putting an end to the Polish run, but instead, Cami Seti turning around. Appreciation and support for Cami and Seti, who are fighting for it and keeping it interesting. Oh my gosh, four HP, down goes Tito. Cami will not give this up without a fight. But it's not enough, and Trulex pulls out the win, the second consecutive for him and Chicho. There too, Cami goes in. No shot hit, Trulex finds it, Siphon comes through, it's now a one-on-one -on -one and Trulex. But. Your global champions are here. Miro and Cooper from day one getting knocked out of the upper bracket to standing tall here in day number three, our championship Sunday. Your 2023 global champions even, Miro and Cooper. Congratulations, Cooper. You are our 2023 Global Champions! Lift that trophy! Cooper's first FNCS win could not be any more dramatic, and Miro vaults himself on top of the GOAT competition with his sixth championship. I got not one, but two, but three, but four, but five FNCS wins, make it six now. All because of a million dollar coin flip. Well, I flipped the coin, and I was like, all right, we'll find on Cooper. I mean, uh, Cooper, <laughs> you, you, did you think back then, a coin flip, would lead to a million dollar FNCS global championship title. I mean, not at all. I mean, back then I only had 5K earned when we started playing. Oh my gosh. Um, Gotta up that number now. <laughs> the final standings had five NA teams in the top 10 with four EU teams as well. And a lone Asia team, MK Papa and Shalom, finished in fifth to break the NA and EU dominance. Instead of our tradition of pulling a historic quote to cap off our video, Miro and Cooper gave wise words in the glow of victory, so let's hear from them. Keep moving, man. Life's gonna knock you guys down so many times, even outside of playing video games, and it's just about getting back up. If you stay down, you're gonna stay down. Like, that's how it works. You gotta, you gotta get up and keep moving. That's my best advice. Cooper, you wanna say anything, man? I, FNCS Global Champion? <laughs> I mean, coming from me especially, just chase your dreams, man. I played this game for three years, having little to no earnings, and I'm on the main stage now being great. Feels good. Like, sub, and check out our other videos. Fortnite Competitive is back.